ambassador facing a criminal trial on child sex charges. I'm talking about Joseph Wesolowski, the first senior Catholic official to be accused of paedophilia by the Holy See. His trial is expected to start in the next few months, with many seeing it as a test of Pope Francis's commitment to tackling sexual abuse within the church. Reporting from Rome, here's Franz van Gert's Seema Gupta. He preached the gospel but hid a double life. Joseph Wieselowski, a former Vatican diplomat in the Dominican Republic, was accused of child sexual abuse and defrocked in June. But his problems don't end there. As a citizen of the Holy See, the former Polish Archbishop is also awaiting trial on charges of sexual abuse of minors and possessing child pornography. He was arrested in September in what was an unprecedented decision. The house arrest was authorized and approved by the sovereign pontiff because it referred to a bishop, and in particular to a bishop who has diplomatic responsibilities as the representative of the Holy See. Giovanni Jacope is a former prosecutor at the Vatican a city-state with its own tribunal and penal code to be applied in the first ever criminal trial on pedophilia, in this case against Vesolowski. Ordinarily, the criminal legislation from Italian law is applied. But from what I understand, on the issue of pedophilia, the specific rules of Vatican City will apply. Rules that the Pope wishes to enforce strictly. Since his election last year, Pope Francis has vowed to clamp down on pedophile priests. When he met former abuse victims in July, he did not mince words either. Humildemente pido perdón. También les pido perdón por los pecados de omisión por partes de líderes de la Iglesia. It was a heartfelt apology, but also a chance to express his personal determination to fight these crimes. Me comprometo a no tolerar el daño infligido a un menor por parte de nadie, independientemente de su estado clerical. Todos los obispos rendirán cuentas de esta responsabilidad. And the reforms have begun. At the end of 2013, the Pope created a commission for child protection. Father Hans Zollner is one of its members. Its mission is to provide the pontiff guidance on how to overcome pedophilia in the church. This is a normal evolution of a process of growing awareness of this plague. And this is a continuation of what Pope Benedict XVI began, which is a policy of zero tolerance. One aspect of the reform process involves psychological training for the clergy. Father Mattia Di Padova was ordained two years ago. At 27, he's already seeing a change in church education. Sexuality and psycho-emotional issues are not taboo. It's part of our training to become priests. There are now many occasions when we can discuss sexuality and our own sexuality. Another component involves helping victims, as they've suffered from the church's past silence on the issue. That was the case for 39-year-old Diego, who prefers to keep his identity hidden. He was 12 when, at his hometown close to Naples, he met the Catholic priest who he says destroyed his life. He was my religion teacher. One day he invited me to his home. He sat on the bed and I was on the sofa. At one point he told me to come closer. I went close to him and then he started touching my intimate parts. This was repeated over three to four years. Diego is undergoing psychiatric treatment likely to last a lifetime, while the Catholic priest in question has been transferred to another parish and has never appeared in an Italian court. In his quest for justice, Diego wrote directly to Pope Francis, but the reply he received has only made him angrier. An official letter from the Vatican said the case would be 
forwarded to the relevant department. Six months have passed and they never came back to me. And then they tell me I should pray for the Pope? Is this some kind of joke? This further offended me, made me feel even worse. Last year, the Vatican strengthened laws against child abuse. Those found guilty of pedophilia now face up to 35 years in prison. But the road to regaining the trust of victims hurt and betrayed by the Catholic Church is still a long one. And for more on this, I'm now joined on set by Father Aidan Troy. He joins us from St. Joseph's, an English-speaking Roman Catholic parish here in Paris. Hello, thanks very much for coming in. First of all, what's your reaction to the fact that this trial is going to go ahead, the first of its kind? I think a trial like this gives a very strong signal that maybe we're at the beginning of tackling this in a very serious and very comprehensive way. Obviously, my overwhelming feeling still is of absolute sadness, and I must admit, as a priest of shame, that so much of this has happened. But I think the last two popes in particular, you know, Pope Benedict XVI, he used the phrase zero tolerance. Pope Francis has taken it up. I think the very end of the piece you had there says it very, very well, the road ahead to actually comprehensively helping the people Acknowledging the enormity of what's happened um, is a long one, but I'm, I'm encouraged to answer your question, very encouraged that this trial is scheduled. Well, but what about the fact that it's not actually happening in the country where the accusations were made? Yeah, well, I, I, I take that point completely that there has been criticism of this, but on the other hand, I suppose, not being a lawyer myself, but I, I do see a sense in which, supposing just for instance in the Dominican Republic or in Poland, the trial, we'll just say, collapsed because of diplomatic immunity, even though this man has been removed, he's no longer a bishop, he's no longer a priest, he's, he, he's, he's, he's not in the clerical ranks, at least by saying that the Vatican will take this trial under norms prepared by this pope, personally, I think, sends out a message. Now, as I say, if, for instance, after this trial, and if anything is possible that he's extradited, that's another day's work. But I do think that there is a certain sense in which the Vatican has tried to move in and say, we will do all we can in these circumstances. Maybe the next time extradition or going back to the country may be the right thing to do. But on, on this one, I think it's, it's a good start. But bringing a case forward is one thing. But what about appropriate punishment. What I mean by that, that is that in the last, um, we could say, high-profile case of the Vatican, nothing to do with paedophilia, no. the Pope's former butler, right. he ended up being released and pardoned by the Pope after just a few months. Might that not happen in this case, where really the, the, the trial goes ahead to show that the church is doing something, but then maybe in the end the former ambassador will end up only serving a very short sentence? Yeah, that of course, I mean, in any jurisdiction, uh, I've seen it in, in countries that I've worked in before where a, s a sentence is guaranteed to be 50%, for instance, there's early release, etc. But taking your point, I have a very, very strong feeling, and I could be wrong, that this is one in which Pope Francis personally is going to watch this. I've read different reports. They're talking about a minimum of 12 years, possibly up to 35 years, we heard there. And I don't honestly believe that if the church has any credibility at all, that there's going to be the Butler story was a slightly different one, but on paedophilia, and don't forget, you've got people like Cardinal O'Malley, the priest you saw in that package, Mary Collins, one of the um, survivors in Ireland, on this commission. Now, I cannot see Pope Francis being able to say, oh, it's a pity he got out after, uh, say, a year or something. I think it's going to be longer than that. But what about people like Diego? We saw a man in that report uh, who has uh, brought a case forward against a priest and, and he was just moved. Apparently no legal action has been taken against him. So do you think that to some degree that the church is only changing superficially? I think at this stage, I mean, Diego's story would break anyone's heart. And I thought the saddest part of it was when it said that likely the psychiatric care and the therapy would go on for the rest of his life. Isn't that? I mean, that's a life sentence. And if it is the case, as the package there says that this is, of course, that's the mistake the church has always made. Moving people is never going to solve it. And all I can say is there's no way I could face Diego and say to him that what happened was right. I'd have to just ask his forgiveness, even though I didn't know him before. But I do think that the highlighting of this by what you've just shown is very, very good, because at least it's saying 
this cries out to heaven for vengeance. It's so wrong that nobody could stand over it. And I hope that the more we come to learn of it, and some of us are still surprised at the enormity and the widespread nature of it, that this would never happen again. And like you say, Pope Francis really trying to open up a new chapter. Are you hopeful that uh, he will really, like you say, be watching this very closely and also take a stand on other issues and be very progressive? Yeah, I, I, I do think he's trying, and I, I suppose I, I'm trying to be a realist. I think he also needs enormous support by those around him. And I think that's going to be crucial to it. And he does seem to, in the group of eight cardinals that he's brought around in this commission led by Cardinal O'Malley, I do think he's trying to say, I can't do this on my own. And it's not a job for one person. T take the chief executive of any big organisation. If they don't have a good board of directors or whatever you would call them, I think this is what we need. But I would also say that I think the most important thing he's doing is he's putting down markers and saying there are boundaries now and we're not going to allow these be either not met or crossed and ignored. OK, thank you very much indeed, Father Aidan Troy, for coming in for Focus. That's it from me for now. I'll be back in just a few minutes with a news roundup. Do stay tuned to France 24.